How's it going on, everybody? Today, I'm gonna to do a review of my Breitling Super Ocean. Uh, this is the Super Ocean Chronograph A13340. Uh, this is a bit of an older watch. Uh, this watch was produced from about 2003 to approximately 2011. So it's, uh, it's definitely in the, in the Schneider era of uh, Breitling. Uh, if you don't know, Breitling kind of, you can sort of almost classify Breitling as having eras depending on who the CEO was. Um, in the 80s, the Schneider family sort of reinvigorated Breitling and uh, the Teddy Schneider was the CEO. So that's the son of Ernst Schneider who kind of reinvigorated Breitling after the quartz crisis in the 80s. And that's kind of when the sort of blingy big Breitlings started with the Chronomat and uh, Teddy definitely continued that on. Now Breitling's under the leadership of George Kern and they sort of toned down the uh, look like this. You know, a lot of the Chroma mats have sort of toned down, the Super Oceans have toned down. They're not quite as blingy and busy dials and big, but uh, in any case, this watch is definitely in that era. This watch specifically is from 2007 and uh, I bought it used, so, um, I have not owned this watch since new. I've owned this watch for about half a year. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna go over my experience over with it, what it means to me and uh, all that good stuff. So, so uh, Breitling as a brand first is definitely one of my top favorite brands. I think Breitling basically is my favorite brand, honestly. Um, and the way I typically would classify my favorite brand is kind of which, how many different watches they make that I like and I'd like to own. And there are a lot of Breitlings that I like to own. Um, you know, I'm definitely, I, I love the Chronomats. I love the Schneider era Chronomats. Um, I love the new Chronomats under George Kern. I love the Super Oceans. I love the Colts when they were out, um, the Super Ocean Heritage, and of course, naturally the Navi Timer. So I'm a huge Breitling fan, so you know, take what I'm gonna say maybe with a grain of salt, but uh, yeah. Breitling's a great brand. I think they're a bit on the up and up now under the new leadership, but what this watch represents to me is the perfect Schneider era watch, or at least one of them. It is very, it's bigger. It's not enormous, it's 42 millimeters. It's about 15, it's about 17 millimeters thick, so it's quite a thick boy, but it, it, it represents that sort of blingy, over-styled era of Breitling. It's got the rider tabs, it's got the full polish, it's got the super busy dial. Uh, and for me, that, that's a huge plus. Uh, I, I really, you know, enjoy that look. It's sort of a, it's almost like a, an everything that people don't like about, about Breitling, people that criticize Breitling, this thing nearly, uh, basically in captures. It's, it's not a Super Avenger that's 48 millimeters. That's a little bit too big for me, but in any case, I kind of feel like this is sort of a, you know, ha ha to people who kind of crap on Breitling. Cause I, I, you know, I grew up during the era of these shiny watches. And to me, that's Breitling. So uh, I, this watch means a lot to me. This is my first luxury watch that I ever bought and uh, did a lot of research to get it. And um, yeah. So Breitling as a brand is, is one of my favorite brands. Like I said, it's got a lot of heritage and I just love the aesthetic. I love how they look. I love the sort of overbuilt toughness of the watches and uh, yeah. So as I said, this is a Super Ocean. It's no longer made. This one's from 2007. The movement in here is uh, a Valjoux 7750, uh, top grade Breitling basically specs them out to be chronometer certified and they do some finishing work on them and effectively this is one of the best 7750s you can get. IWC, Breitling, those are sort of the, in my opinion, the sort of the top level 7750s um, just because they're finished really well and, and then they're chronometer certified. So um, when you buy this watch, you get a the Breitling certificate, the chronometer certificate like all Breitlings have, uh, assuming you can get one with a box and papers, which I did get box and papers, hang tag, everything. So um, yeah, Valjoux 7750 chronograph. It's got the unidirectional rotating, rotating uh, um, counterweight on the balance, on the, on the movement. You can definitely feel it. Some, if you go like that, you can definitely feel it. But in my opinion, on the wrist, you can't really feel when it wobbles. So I think people kind of, Maybe over exaggerate that a bit, but 
in any case, you can't really feel it. Been a very accurate watch for me. This one has been serviced since it was new. Uh, it was serviced about two years ago, not serviced by me, but it did go back to Breitling for service. So uh, it, it runs tip top. It's super accurate. This one's running about plus two, plus three round there. Um, most 7750s that I have, I have three of them and, and um, they all run really well. They're all super accurate. They're all quite, uh, quite nice. So this one's quite accurate. As you can see, the dial is very busy uh, in typical Breitling style. I love the Breitling winged logo. I, I wish that they didn't get rid of that logo. I understand why they did, but I, you know, as a as I grew up in the 2000s and the 90s, I, I really liked this. This is Breitling to me. This logo is Breitling. On this watch, it's white gold. It's a white gold badge, so that's a really amazing detail. Um, and as you can see on the dial there, there's a concentric circles that goes around the whole dial and it goes on the sub dials as well it's a little bit hard to get um, without putting it up really close but yeah this is the black dial version of the reverse panda you can buy these in a panda too and you can also buy these in a blue dial uh, with white sub dials so there's a couple options there some of these models are different I believe when you get the 2007 plus years um, you get a different bracelet, and I'll talk about that just in a second, but as far as the dial work goes, it's 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 really amazing. It's super crisp, the printing's great, the concentric, the concentric circles is a really good detail. Um, the loom, I'll put up a loom shot right now. The loom is very good, it still lasts. I believe it's super luminova, it's in a green tint, and it's got those sort of railroad style Breitling type indices there applied. Um, so, quite good loom still. Uh, Overall, the, the bezels, uh, the dial is really cool. I, I quite enjoy how it has that sort of, the chapter ring has the, you can do it in one hundredths of a minute. So you can, you know, figure out like what percentage of a minute uh, is there. I know some folks might criticize that as kind of being kind of a weird detail, but I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. It's an interesting feature that I'd never use, but in any case, it's there. Uh, the dial is definitely busy. Uh, but overall, I, I don't really have a problem reading it and telling the time. I think it's quite nice. The little red tip on the seconds hands is nice, uh, the chronograph seconds hand, sorry, and I really do love the Breitling B in the anchor as a counterbalance. I think that's a really nice detail. Quite a signature detail in my opinion, especially of this era of Breitling watches. You'll notice too that the dial does not say Swiss made. Kind of an interesting detail. I don't really see any Swiss luxury watches with uh, Swiss made on without saying Swiss made on them, but it, it does say that on the case back. So in any case, it doesn't really bog me. It's just kind of an interesting detail that may be worth noting. Automatic, uh, Breitling chronometer, super ocean, 500 meters water resistant, I might add. So yeah, there is a lot of text on this dial, but overall, I personally don't have a problem reading it, but I tend to like relatively busy dials. So, um, you know, up to your personal preference, I suppose. There is a regular version of this watch that's not a a chronograph that's kind of this style super ocean but for me the chronograph one works well so the bracelet is the Breitling professional 2 as I mentioned uh, depending on what year of these watches you buy I believe if it's like 2007 and back you'll end up with a, you'll get a professional one uh, I do recommend getting the professional 2 bracelet because I think it's definitely an upgrade uh, visually and just how it functions. I think that the Professional 2 is a really good bracelet. No longer offered on Breitlings now, they're using the Professional 3. Uh, the Professional 3 basically has a little bit thicker center links and thinner side links, so. But the, Bre the Breitling bracelet's really comfortable. It's got the legendary kind of, you know, drape that Breitling bracelets have. Each, each little piece here is individual and it's uh, assembled uh, using screws, so. Bracelet is super comfortable. It's very well finished. It's very well made. I love how it has the sort of on the clasp down here. It's got the Breitling detail and the French Modèle Déposé uh, Manufacture en Suisse. My French is terrible. My apologies, but Manufacture en Suisse. Suisse. I don't know. So very interesting. Bracelet is great. I'll go over the clasp in a second. It's maybe in negatives, but in any case. Uh, overall, the Professional 2 bracelet is wonderful. It's extremely comfortable and, and it just feels really good on wrist. The bezel, classic 
uh, Schneider error wider tabs bezel. Excellent bezel action. Um, no play whatsoever. I find that the bezel is super easy to grab uh, with these rider tabs. If you grab it on the side, definitely not that great, but I think that it's definitely, it's intended to be used with the rider tabs. It's interesting too how the pip, the arrow on the pip there kind of slides over that inner chapter ring, so, or inner ring, not a chapter ring, but the inner ring chimney, I believe Breitling people call it. So, uh, Kind of a cool design. Overall, I like the bezel. I like how it's a steel bezel. To me, that's a Breitling Schneider, Breitling era design and um, very nice. Only negative perhaps of the bezel is that you can bang it up and it's basically impossible to fix. You can't really replace it, the insert or something like that, but it's just, it's fixed with the screws as well. So interesting Breitling detail. There's the B signature on the, on the bezel right there. And uh, Overall, I really like the bezel. I think it looks great. It's, it's a very signature, very signature type look. The crystal on this bezel on this watch is really good. It has uh, anti-reflective floating. I think that Breitling does the best crystals in the business. Personally, they're super legible, super easy to see through, and uh, overall, the crystal is fantastic. And yes, it's sapphire. Uh, the case quite thick. It's beefy. It's chunky. It feels hard. It feels it's it's a heavy watch. Uh, the finishing is completely blinged out, polished, as you, as you do with Breitling. So, um, it, it, it's really good. Uh, the case is beautiful. I love the, the case back on Breitling's are, is really nice with the details there, with the French writing on there. I, I really like that. The Breitling B anchor logo and, and the 1884. Overall, uh, the case is a cool design. It's very aggressive, kind of chunky, beefy style. Uh, that's exactly what I wanted in a Breitling. So, uh, for me, the case is fantastic. I, I can definitely respect someone who would not enjoy the full blinged out polish. I don't enjoy that from, you know, all the time. But for me, this, the Breitling, I needed one that was blinged out. So uh, that's why I got that. It is comfortable. It does hook over your wrists uh, when you wear it. But uh, it is it is quite thick. It's, it's, it is a heavy watch too. I'll just do a wrist shot now. Put it on my wrist. I'll put up a few pictures too, just so you can see it. Not really close to the camera. But overall, I have a seven and a half inch wrist, and you can see it's a bit of a it's a bit of a thick watch. It's chunky, it's beefy. People are gonna notice this thing when you uh, walk into a room. Uh, it, it, you know, I, I definitely notice when I've gone out to dinners and things. People do see it on your wrist, but you know, if you don't really enjoy that and you want something a little bit more subtle, probably not the watch for you. But for me, I kind of enjoy from time to time wearing this kind of blinged out, big kind of crazy watch. So big fan how it wears. It is very comfortable. I have a Tudor Black Bay. It's quite thick, like the 41 mil. And frankly, this thing doesn't feel much bigger. The, it, it just, it just, it's just really comfortable, I find. And the Professional 2 bracelet is really comfortable. It just totally fits your wrists. It, it goes around every angle and uh, it's just really comfortable. But as I say, it is tall, it is heavy. So I'm just probably used to wearing bigger watches. But if you're somebody who likes maybe 39 millimeter watches or under, this thing might be a little bit big, but I'm sure you know that already. So what are the negatives of this watch then? Well, in terms of the actual watch, I would say that the first negative is the, is the clasp. However, in retrospect, when we're thinking back to 2007 uh, and the whole era that this watch was made, this clasp was pretty good. Rolex was still making kind of stamp clasp back then. Omega clasps, I would say, were superior to this clasp. They were full milled out already, but uh, overall, this class, it, it, it functions well. Uh, it, it, this is an older watch. It, it fits well. It's never going to fall off your wrist. It's nice and thin too, but it, it is definitely not, you know, not as good as a new Rolex clasp or Omega or Tudor clasp. Um, the newer Breitling clasps on their rubber bracelets are very good, but I, I noticed they have started to upgrade some of their bracelets from this. So, you know, if this thing was new in 2020, this would definitely be a hard knock on it. But since it's, this watch is from 2007, uh, I'll give that a pass. Other negatives, well, it, it's, I mean, this is kind of probably subjective negatives, but yeah, the blinged out shine, maybe not for you, the heft and the height. Uh, to me, I, you know, that's what I love about it, right? It's, it, it, that's, that's, for me, that's, that's this watch. It's blingy, it's big, it's beautiful, so, um, but. You wouldn't buy it if you didn't like that kind of thing, right? The other negative I would say is in terms of the crystal, 
I don't know if you can notice it, this crystal with these crystals that are applied with an anti-reflective coating, my crystal has a little bit of scratches in the finish. You can see a little bit kind of right there maybe, but sort of right here, it's a little bit of damage in the finish, but so, but overall, I you know, that's a really nitpicky. It's, it's pretty normal, I think, for those things to get damaged over the years. It wasn't me who did it, but in any case, um, I think that that's a, a, a minor negative. I'll just show you the chronograph working here. It's a screw down. Everything's screwed down. This has 500 meters water resistance, which is quite impressive on a chronograph. Uh, so you just press it like any 7750. Uh, it's a clutch, it has a clutch. It does not have a column wheel, as you know, but or overall it's fine. I mean, I don't use the chronograph too often. I sort of just like how it works, but um, resets, no problem, and uh, everything works, so. Very good. Lastly, I think that this watch offers an excellent value. If you're looking at these things in the second market, secondary market, we all know kind of around right now, Breitling does not hold its value quite as well as some other watches and you can kind of see why maybe like this obviously this design would not appeal to everybody it, you know only certain folks will like this watch other other watches kind of have universal appeal because they're more toned down watches maybe but th this 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 thing represents an excellent value if you like the design of this i highly suggest checking watches this exactly exact watch out um you know for me i was kind of convinced conv looking at an avenger a newer avenger but I saw this thing in it, a very similar aesthetic, and uh, I, you know, I just fell for it, right? I just, I just fell for how it looked. I preferred some aspects over the Avenger. I liked how it was a little bit smaller than the Avenger, and um, it just has that whole Schneider appeal. So, I, if you're into this sort of era of Breitling and you're kind of looking to spend, you know, maybe under, let's say, under four thousand dollars, under three thousand dollars, this is a great watch to look at. I'm talking in U.S. prices, so a lot of detail. You get a lot of money. It's a lot of watch for your money, and uh, overall, Breitling, one of my favorite brands of all time, and uh, I, I highly recommend this watch if you're interested, and I can definitely vouch for the quality. So, um, anyways, I've been, this is my review of my Breitling uh, Super Ocean A13340. Uh, I appreciate the time that you've taken to watch this video, and uh, stay safe and take care. See you, see you later. Bye-bye.